There's Taylor Hearn joining me now. And of course, uh, we have a lot to get to today, Taylor. But I wanted to start the interview with that. Uh, KAUZ was the first ever news network that I had a job as. And it was really cool that Robin was there on that day to ask you some questions. Kind of a full circle moment for you. What was that like for you? It was it was it was a crazy, crazy day in general. Um, she had told me probably weeks, probably like two two weeks prior that she was going to be covering our game. And uh, fortunate enough, that was right around the same time that they told me I was getting the opening day start. So I, I just thought it was awesome. Uh, it was something that as a family we thought was just so cool. Um, and as a, as a big brother to have my little sister there and be able to ask me questions, is, you know, it's something that guys dream about. So I, I thought it was so awesome. And I've, I've been so proud of her ever since. No question, a family affair. Okay, so you were drafted in 2019, full big league season in 2021, had some time both obviously as a starter and a reliever. So what have you learned, Taylor, from the moment that you got drafted or debuted um, and to this point? How has your game changed in that short amount of time? It's, it's changed so much. You know, I, I tell people um, – when you know when you get to the big leagues, it's, you're playing chess, not checkers anymore. So you always got to try to stay two steps two, uh, two steps ahead of everybody, um, and just a matter of just coming after guys. You know, I've always been able to use my fastball and slider pretty well, um, as I've gotten a lot more comfortable with it this year, and just kind of just doing whatever role they need me to do. You know, um, and especially with the situation that we have now, where we went out and got a bunch of starters and stuff. So, you know, they they're gonna need me in the bullpen, so I'm all for it, ready for it. Yeah, you mentioned a bunch of starters. By the way, Jacob DeGrom, no big deal. Nathan Avaldi, no big deal. Can you talk about the mindset, Taylor, going into the 2000, 2023 season? I mean, the Rangers are going after it. They are stacked. You get Bruce Bochy. Can you speak to playing for Boach and just the teammates that are surrounding you and, and how confident this club is? Uh, it, it's been a lot of fun, you know. Um, you know, we all been working out with each other out there in Arlington. So got a chance to meet Nathan. Uh, I got a chance to meet Jacob a little bit and Andrew as well. I've been knowing him for a little while, so it's been fun. And like I, I really do think we're gonna we're gonna surprise some people this year. Um, and also with Bruce, Bruce has been awesome. Been a chance to really get to know him as well. And I've been working with Mike Maddox as well, and uh, Mike has been really helpful. We've been already looking at video and stuff, so I'm really excited. And I really do think we're gonna surprise people this year. What's the first thing that Maddox has noticed about your stuff? Uh, the first thing he told me whenever we had to sit down was like, uh, well, I see you got a really good heater. I've seen it uh, and a good power slider. So he's like, we're going to definitely use those and uh, along with your change up and sinker as well. So uh, it's been good, man. He's been he's been so good and so useful. And uh, uh, I'm so excited to work with him. Taylor, you guys grew up in the Royce City, Texas area, not too far away from your home park there at Globe Life Field. And you had tweeted the other day looking for some local area DFW high schools uh, to, uh, you know, just join them in on a practice. Did you get any uh, any uh, people kind of taking you up on this? And why did you want to do this? I had um, <laughs> I had over 25, 30 messages uh, on Twitter. And then I put it on my Instagram as well. Um, so I'm still trying to fulfill those. And it was something I did last year when we were in, in a lockout. And I, I kind of just wanted to go work out with a bunch of high school kids. Um, and plus, it was pretty cool to go back to a lot of the fields I used to play at. You know, they still the same or still have gotten better. And um, just being a DFW kid, I've never got the chance to work out with a major league guy growing up. So I always thought it was cool for kids to be able to see me as a guy that that was, you know, in high school just like them and always wanted to ask the big leader questions and just being able to work out with them has, has been fun. So um, I, I've always liked giving back, you know, a lot of the stuff I've been doing this last off season, uh, taking kids in my hometown to Walmart on shopping spree, Dick sporting goods. So I've always been the type to use the platform that God gave me to be able to give back and uh, help people in, in any way. Yeah, you're not kidding. You did it as early as Martin Luther King Jr. Day. You and a couple of your other teammates, uh, Beasley, of course, on your coaching staff. Chris Young was there, too, at the Rangers Youth Academy on Major League Baseball, or excuse me, MLK Jr. Day. And you did it not only for um, the Players Alliance, but also just because it's so important for you to make sure that, that there is diversity in this game. Can you take me just through that day and, and why that was so impactful for you? That day was that, that that day was awesome because it was um, it was a chance to talk to young black kids that are uh, boys and girls as well just to give them our experiences you know like Beasley Beasley's been been through a lot as well and you got a chance to talk to me Marcus um, Chris Young was there 
and a bunch of other ex big leaders or other big leaders as well, like Willie Calhoun was there um, and Jackie Bradley Jr. So it, it was a lot of fun. But I mean, I've always been a big advocate of that to try to do whatever I can to try to get more black kids into playing baseball because everybody knows in Texas the dominant sport is football. So um, that's always been an uphill battle. And then obviously the prices of baseball. So it's always good to give those those kids like uh, all the stuff I've been through to be able to help them out, you know, because growing up, I, I never really had anybody really help me out with all that type of stuff. I was kind of just stuff that I went through as an experience. So I've always been the type of person to wear the type of experiences I went through to be able to help them out. Oh, it's great. What a great day of service on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And I want to speak about your heritage a little bit more, Taylor Hearn. I'm learning um, just more about you and the fact that you come from a very prominent African-American rodeo history family. Please tell me a little bit more about Cleo Hearn and uh, just the involvement that you guys have had in your lineage in rodeo. Uh, he, um, I call him the Jackie Robinson of rodeo. You know, he was the first, he, my grandpa being the first African-American going to rodeo scholarship and be a professional cowboy as well uh, in the events of calf roping. And that's something that my dad and uh, his three brothers taught me. And uh, that was the first sport I ever did, you know, before I even picked up a baseball. And, um, you know, he, he has been through so much um, as long and as long as he's he's been doing well and everything and just got inducted to the Oklahoma Rodeo Hall of Fame and now he's about to get inducted to the Texas Rodeo Hall of Fame and uh, you know that's a little part of me that I'm always always going to keep with me and and you know I always tell people all the time that whenever I'm done playing I'm definitely gonna get back into rodeo and it's, you know that's that was my first love so it's definitely something uh, I really love and uh, I'm working on doing a uh, baseball rodeo camp as well to try to uh, help that out as well. That's awesome. He was the first African-American to attend college on a rodeo scholarship. Uh, great looking man. Uh, what, what an honor, I would imagine, to just listen to his stories. And I'm sure he's very proud of you as well as your sister on all that you're doing. Taylor, thanks for taking a few moments to be with us on High Heat. Best of luck uh, teaching those kids in the DFW area and best of luck with the Rangers this season.